French footballer Fabien Barthez built a strong reputation over a long and successful career. The goalkeeper was a regular on the French national team, as well as at numerous European clubs. He is recognised as one of the greats in the net. His impressive career began at French club Toulouse, for whom he made his first division debut in 1991. Fabien Barthez was born on June 28, 1971, in Lavelanet, a small community located in the south of France with a population of almost 7,000, according to the latest census. Fabien soon outgrew his small town beginnings to become one of football's greats. He joined Toulouse FC in 1990, after many years spent practicing soccer in the streets of Lavelanet against the wishes of his father who made it clear that he wanted Fabian to become a rugby player. He came because his dad was divorced. He was living in a nearby village with his mum and I was going over there to wait for him and bring him here. And I was carrying his bag. But his dad wanted him to play rugby. His skill and courage soon became evident. He's not scared. This one, he's not afraid. When guys come on to him, he knows how to disperse them, always. And courage, he was never scared. Local coach Amay Goudou placed the young Fabian in goal. The move came as a surprise to other players because of his lack of height. Fabian left Toulouse in 1992 to join Marseille, where he enjoyed his first major successes. By the end of his first season, the club had won both the French Championship and the Champions League, although the club was later stripped of the domestic title due to a match-fixing scandal. After three seasons with Marseille, he moved to AS Monaco, where he won Liga 1 titles in 1997 and 2000. He stayed with Monaco for five seasons, from 1995 to 2000, before signing with Manchester United. The move attracted a transfer fee of 7.8 million pounds. A World Cup medal with France and has won two league uh, championship medals with AS Monaco in 1997 and 2000. Like all the players, to win, to win, to win. It's, it's simple. I'm, I'm here for win and for stay uh, a long, long time. And uh, I want to win, that's it. The Manchester United fans held high hopes for the new recruit in the wake of the departure of their star keeper, Peter Schmeichel, in 1999. The French star had caught the attention of manager Alex Ferguson with his exploits on the pitch for France. Schmeichel's initial replacement, Mark Bosnich, was not seen as a long-term alternative by Ferguson. And after seeing Fabian in action, he was happy to spend the hefty fee to secure him. Fabian didn't take long to adapt to his new club. Fabian Barthez played for five different clubs, Toulouse, Marseille, AS Monaco, Manchester United and Nantes. He played a total of 491 club games. Most of these were for Manchester United. Fabian's first season at Man U proved hugely successful for both player and club. He performed brilliantly, making critical saves and saving United from defeat on many occasions. He soon became a crowd favourite. The fans enjoyed his eccentric behaviour and valued his amazing reflexes. His great form helped United to win the 2001 Premier League title, their third in a row. His second season at the club yielded mixed results. The first half was almost disastrous. However, Sir Alex kept the faith and was soon repaid. Fabian was back to his best by season's end. The next season brought United another Premier League title, but Fabian's patchy performances left his position in doubt. The following season, he lost the starting spot to Tim Howard and was released from his contract at the end of the season. Fabian enjoyed a long and prosperous career on the French national team. He earned his first cap on the 26th of May 1994 against Australia. He missed the Euro 96 campaign, which saw the team make it to the semi-finals. 
However, soon afterwards, he clinched the number one goalkeeper position and held onto it for a decade. His first major tournament as a starting goalkeeper was the 1998 World Cup campaign, played out in front of his home crowd. France were placed in Group C. They went through the group stage winning every game, with Fabian conceding just one goal. They faced tougher opposition in the round of 16 against Paraguay and eventually won 1-0 after extra time. The matches didn't get any easier. Fabian starred yet again as France beat Italy 4-3 on penalties. They then knocked out Croatia 2-1 with Fabian letting in his second goal for the tournament. Next up was the final against defending champions Brazil. Brazil went into the match as world champions. However, France sent the crowds into raptures by prevailing 3-0 and winning their first ever World Cup. Brazil dropped one game in the group stage against Norway, but still progressed to the top of the table. Zinedine Zidane drew first blood for France just before the half-hour mark. The French star scored with a fine header. Despite speculation to the contrary, Brazil's star striker Ronaldo made it into his team's lineup for the final, a daunting prospect for any goalkeeper. It wasn't long before Fabian was tested by the flamboyant star. A long ball from Dunga put Ronaldo through on goal. Fabian rushed out and the two collided. A goal was prevented, but both of them were left needing assistance from club medics. They quickly recovered in time to see Zidane score his second goal on the stroke of half-time. Ronaldo was given another good chance to score in the second half, after the ball fell kindly for him in the box. However, Fabian managed to get in front of the shot and save it. Emmanuel Petit laid the icing on the cake in the 90th minute with a third goal and the cup went to France for the first time. After a disappointing first round exit in the next World Cup, in which they failed to win a game, Fabian lined up for his third tournament appearance in 2006. The French team were eager to make up for their disappointing showing in the 2002 World Cup. Fabian's selection as the starting keeper was met with some derision with many believing Gregory Coupe to be the stronger choice. French fans feared that the team would repeat the disappointment of 2002, and things didn't look good early on. France drew their first two matches against Switzerland and Korea Republic 0-0 and won all respectively. These results worried experts and spectators alike. With the team under pressure and under scrutiny, Fabian did his best to assure the fans that there was no need to panic and that the team was feeling positive about their final group match. No, there isn't any despair. We have to be positive. Nothing is over. We certainly haven't been eliminated, so there we are. There are another 90 minutes to go, so we have to be positive. Faced with the possibility of another embarrassing exit, the team squared up against footballing Mino Togo. They won the match 2-0, helping to keep the critics at bay. However, it was a match they'd been expected to win and the result didn't provide fans with much solace. Still, the victory did secure them a second round berth after Switzerland defeated Korea Republic. France finished second in the group and entered the second round, much to the relief of their fans. They had at least avoided another embarrassing early exit and buried the spectre of 2002. There were still question marks over the team. After all, they had only defeated Togo, the team that finished last in the group without a win. France would need to do more to instill confidence in the fans. Fabian had performed well so far. He had conceded only one goal in the group stage and performed reasonably well. He had done enough so far to justify his spot, but the controversy over his selection had not gone away. Many doubters were reminded of the fact that Gregory Coupe had performed flawlessly in the remainder of France's qualifying campaign after Fabian had been suspended. French manager Raymond Dominic expressed his belief that the team was progressing well. Me, I have a strong conviction that the team is solid and is progressing, has a feeling of strength and solidity, and that on top of this, that it has to work hard against this moment of madness, which, to return to the question, 
We have to create more chances to score, because the more chances we have, the more we shall score. We need to work on this aspect of freeing ourselves up a bit, but with the certainty that the team is solid. I have confirmations of this at every match and every training. France were drawn against Spain in the round of 16. The Spanish team was heavily favoured over France. In contrast to France's shaky start, Spain had progressed through their group, winning every game easily. They scored a total of eight goals and conceded only one. The Spanish team was not short of stars. The lineup included the likes of Ike Casillas, Sergio Ramos, Carlos Puyol, and Fernando Torres. If he was nervous about the match, manager Raymond Dominic didn't let it show. In fact, he claimed to be excited about the second round blockbuster against Spain. We know that Spain is a great footballing nation and everyone knows the players well, which has something a bit different about it. And we're in the last 16 and it's moving forward and it's the World Cup. The last 16 and a team that everyone knows well, so there's something more about it and it's not a smell and as you can sense the excitement every day, this desire to play these matches and we're happy about it because I would be worried if it was just a case of well it's only the last 16 but there is something more about it. France managed to instill confidence in their World Cup bid with a 3-1 defeat. Spain scored the first goal in the 28th minute from a penalty. Frank Ribéry equalised for France before half-time. And in the last minutes of the match, France added two more goals to advance to the quarter-finals. We have to be ambitious. We shouldn't be afraid. We have to believe in ourselves and do everything we can to save ourselves. No one else can do anything about it. In an even more surprising win, France defeated Brazil 1-0 in the quarter-finals. Excitement was now building among fans who had finally found their faith. We did two good games with Spain and Brazil. And I think we will go on because the team works well. We should go on. Three World Cups for a goalkeeper. He is 35 and he is in very good shape. It would be great if he could leave on a great note. The title, a podium. France faced another powerhouse in Portugal. They won the semi-final match 1-0. Italy was the team that stood between France and a second World Cup triumph. Both teams scored early in the match, but couldn't make any further breakthroughs. As the match remained undecided after extra time, it was left up to penalties to separate the teams. Unfortunately for the French fans, the Italians triumphed after Fabian failed to save any of their penalties. To add to the disappointment, star Zinedine Zidane was sent off in extra time for headbutting Marco Materazzi. It's a pity that he used his force and not words. He should have swallowed pride. He should not have shown such an image. Zinedine's headbutt made headlines all over the world. It was his last ever match and a disappointing way to end such a brilliant career. He did the right thing and apologised for his behaviour. We are very moved. He offered his apologies to children. It is very touching. He is a great player and he will stay a great one. The headbutting incident initially put a dent in his reputation. However, Zidane was eventually able to put it all behind him. Fabian Barthez has garnered such honours as the 1998 World Cup title, the UEFA European Championship in 2000, and the FIFA Confederations Cup in 2003. Fabian Barthez and Zinedine Zidane both played for the French national team between 1994 and 2006. Zidane is considered one of the greatest ever footballers and was a tremendous influence on all his teammates, including Fabian Barthez. Affectionately known as Zizou, Zidane is one of only two three-time FIFA World Player of the Year winners, along with Ronaldo. He grew up in the Castellane district of Marseille. 
where he played for the junior team of US St. Henri as a teenager. His talents were recognised at the age of 16 when he was recruited by Carr. He made more of an impact at Bordeaux, where his skills and technical brilliance were recognised by European powerhouse Juventus, who recruited him in 1996. After moving to Juventus, the honours began to roll in. He won the Ballon d'Or in 1998 and the FIFA World Player of the Year award in 98 and 2000. His style was simple and graceful. His playmaking attempts looked effortless and he was skillfully adept at distributing any pass thrown in his direction. He moved to Real Madrid in 2001 for a then record fee of 75 million euros, where he proved his worth by continuing his winning form, helping Madrid win the Champions League title in 2001-2002 and the La Liga title in 2002-2003. Fabian also played with many stars at Manchester United, among them David Beckham. Of course, Beckham's fame extended well beyond the football field, and he remains the most recognisable player in the world. David Beckham played with Manchester United between 1993 and 2003, before moving to Real Madrid, where he played until his transfer to Los Angeles Galaxy in 2007. He also captained England from November 2000 until the end of the 2006 World Cup Finals. On the pitch, Bex is famous for his skill in the midfield. He's also known for the accuracy of his shots. He has scored many goals from free kicks with an amazing skill for bending or curving the ball. He remains one of the game's biggest ever superstars. Fabian was able to get one up on Beckham in Euro 2004 when he saved the English captain's penalty kick in a France-England encounter. His save kept France in the game, which they eventually won 2-1. I think there's always pressure taking penalties. You know, everyone knows that, every footballer knows that, every Sunday league player knows there's pressure taking any penalties um, wherever you are, whether you're over Hackney Marshes or whether you're playing in the World Cup final, you know, there's pressure. So, um, of course, everyone feels pressure, but you know, I'm, uh, I'll put myself up again and I'll take another one, if, if, if so be. Beckham will be best remembered for his time at Manchester United, where he made his name. During his time there, the club won countless cups and trophies, and Bex was crowned a legend by the fans. Fabian also got to play with many talented footballers in the French team, during the most successful period in French footballing history. His teammate Thierry Henry remains one of France's greatest exports after more than 13 years on the side. He made his senior debut for Monaco in 1994, playing at the opposite end of the field to Fabian. The gifted striker went on to play for Juventus for one season before joining Arsenal. Henry's star began to rise at Arsenal, where he enjoyed much success, including Premier League victories in 2001, 2002 and 2003-2004. They also won the FA Cup in 2001-2002, 2003 and 2004-2005. Henri is credited as a key ingredient in Arsenal's incredible post-millennium success. He scored 174 goals in 254 appearances for the Gunners. His talent for finding the back of the net earned him many admirers as well as many sponsorship deals. Henri's time at Arsenal was brought to an end in 2007 by a transfer to Spanish club Barcelona. Ten years earlier, the French selectors had been so impressed with the form of the little-known Henri that they decided to send him to the 1998 World Cup. That decision was justified when he stepped up alongside Fabien Barthez to raise the cup in front of his home crowd. In August 2006, Fabien announced that he would retire from football if he had not found a club by the end of the month. His preference was to re-sign with his first club, Toulouse. In the end, he was unable to come to an agreement with Toulouse and confirmed his retirement in October. However, he returned later in the year after signing a contract with French League One side, FC Nantes Atlantic. He eventually retired for good in 2007. He left the world of football with many individual honors and team successes. He remains France's most capped goalkeeper and has also made more World Cup appearances than any other player. He also shares the record for the most World Cup clean sheets. 
At the time, I was 15 years old, but I remember some really great moments in front of the television, living the moments with the team, hoping we could go all the way to victory at the end of the campaign. Fabian's individual awards include various Best Goalkeeper Awards and Footballer of the Year Awards. His rich legacy has been celebrated in a popular French soccer exhibition. His honours include the Yashin Awards in 1998, the Liga One Goalkeeper of the Year in 1998, IFFHS World's Best Goalkeeper in 2000, the European Footballer of the Year, Best Goalkeeper in 1998 and in 2000. One of the reasons Fabian wanted to play for Toulouse in 2006 was to be close to his sick mother. He has been looking after her ever since he retired. There have been various rumours and rumblings about a possible comeback, but so far nothing more concrete has materialised and at this stage it looks unlikely that he will ever play again. In an interview with Satanta Sports in 2008, Fabian said that he plans to race Porsche GT3s and play beach football in the future. Ten years earlier, he'd received arguably the greatest honour of his career at the Elysee Palace. Fabian became a Knight of the Legion of Honour, or a Chevalier of the Legion d'Honneur. The order is the highest decoration in France and was awarded to him by the French President. The award was given out after France's World Cup triumph in 1998. Such a historic win for the football-loving nation provided Jacques Chirac with all the motivation he needed to hand out the awards. The people certainly had no complaints as they lined up to hail their national heroes. No doubt winning the 1998 World Cup will remain the jewel in the crown of Fabian's stunning achievements. His extraordinary ability to save the day has earned Fabian Barthez a hallowed place in the Football Hall of Fame. He will long be remembered as the great defender of France.